Okay. Um, <clears throat> our next lesson is titled The Rise of the Dictators. And um, immediately following World War I and, and, and the Treaty of Versailles, and um, politically in Europe, a lot of the new countries that were created were supposed to be democracies. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, um, Austria, and, and Hungary, all of these countries were supposed to become democracies. That was kind of part of the deal that was made in the Treaty of Versailles. Um, but what we're going to find out in this chapter is that um, this, this does not happen, um, that many, many countries in Europe um, lose their democracies and become dictatorships. So let, let's start off by, by taking a look at this map um, of Europe. And you can see um, this is blue would be countries that were democracies around the period we're studying. Okay, we're going to talk late 1920s. Okay. Um, and we're going to see that Spain, Germany, Italy and the USSR are going to be the first countries that that lose their democracies. Well, the USSR was not a democracy, right? The USSR had become communist and a dictatorship during the Russian Revolution. But um, Germany, Italy, and Spain are going to be the first big countries that that flip um, and that get dictators in as their leaders. And, and I think that this is a good moment to to talk, take a look at that word, dictators. Um, what is a dictator? And um, we're going to find out here that a dictator is a, a person, a man in this case, who rules the country with complete authority. Um, there, there is no other voice in government. And, and there is no other um, voice in decision making. Instead, what we have is one person who makes all the rules. And this person is called a dictator. Um, what we're going to find out, and, and this is kind of jumping ahead, but um, so here's again our map here in, in 1929, in 1925. Um, this is before Germany and, and was taken over by Hitler. Um, and we see Italy, we, we see Spain, we see Russia. Um, we're not going to get outside of Europe into Turkey yet. Um, Bulgaria, this is uh, close with Russia, Albania. These, but the green is, is democracies. Europe was democratic in 1920. Um, but in part because of the Great Depression and the financial crisis that followed, um, people put a lot of faith in, in these dictators. And, and you see here that by 1939, okay, this is the, the beginning of World War II, that most of Europe is under authoritarian style governments, under dictators. Um, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, UK and Ireland, uh, Czechoslovakia and Hungary are the only countries left in Europe over these 14 years that are no longer, or that are still democracies, right? That are, no, that are not, um, have not become a dictatorship. And the first country we're gonna talk about here is Italy. Um, Italy is the first of these year mainstream main European countries, other than Russia, but they're kind of east and a huge chunk of Russia is in Asia. Um, that that turns um, that gets under the control of a dictator, and the dictator of Italy is going to be a guy by the name of Benito Mussolini. Okay, here's a picture of Mussolini um, in 1919, right after the war. Remember, Italy is not happy with its treatment in World War. One in the peace treaties of World War I. If you remember, Italy flips sides in 1915, um, goes from being part of the uh, central or the allied nations, Germany, Austria, Italy, joins in with France, Britain, and Russia, in part because they were promised some land um, that they thought belonged to them. They didn't feel like they got enough land, okay? And in 1919, Mussolini calls a group called the Fascismo, they, I can't say that word, <laughs> um, but they're the fascists, okay? Um, the word fascist came from this group. 
Um, a fascist government is a government that has complete control over the people and anyone who disagrees is punished quickly and severely. This can also be said about um, you know, many dictatorships or authoritarian style governments. But I was told once about a fascism, that in a fascism, the government comes before the people's rights. Okay, so we're gonna find out that in a, in a communist dictatorship like Russia, it's supposed to be the people's rights come first. In a democracy, right, people's rights come first. But in a fascist government like Mussolini pushed, the government, what, what's good for the government comes before what's right for the people, okay? Um, after World War I, Italy was left poor, like many parts of Europe, especially in the South. Um, and there was, of course, the fear of socialism taking over in Italy. They, they saw what happened in big Russia next door. They saw what happened in Germany, where there was an attempted socialist revolution. And, and there was this fear of socialism coming in. And of course, the people who this scared the most were the bourgeoisie. These were the rich business owners who did not want the government coming in and taking huge chunks of their profit or, or maybe taking over their whole business, right? So we're going to find that in this case, it's, it's, it's a movement where the rich business owners are going to support this, this strong man named Mussolini who's going to come in and is going to promise that he's going to not allow socialism in their country. He's going to fix Italy's economy. Um, interestingly, although 10 years earlier, Mussolini was part of a socialist group, but, but we're not going to get too deep into the story there. Um, in 1920, 1921, Mussolini formed a group of people called the Black Shirts. And the Black Shirts would attack anyone who disagreed with Mussolini. This was not a small group of people, right? We're not talking about like a ragtag group of 20, 30 guys, with baseball bats that would go around and beat up people who disagree with Mussolini. This is a picture of a march in Rome of fascists. Look at that. Hundreds, thousands of men wearing black shirts, okay, um, who will secretly come after you if you talk about Mussolini. And really, this applies mostly to influential people and the press, right? So if you're a journalist, if you're part of a news organization, the newspapers at this point, there wasn't really TV news, um, and, and you were writing bad things about Mussolini, you could expect a visit in the middle of the night from the black shirts, okay? And these guys would, would, would rough you up. Um, they weren't as extreme as the SS. Germany's secret police, or the Cheka, the Soviet secret police, who would just kill you if you were talking bad about their leader. But they, they'd rough you up, they'd threaten you. Um, they might, it's not gonna be an official jailman. You might get taken to a quiet, to a private jail where you disappear for a while, and maybe you never come back. But their record doesn't suggest that they were as violent against their citizens as the Germans or the Russians. Italy is gonna be the least violent of these dictators. Um, we talked about how the Italians wanted more land, um, and, and Mussolini in 1922 tells the king, hey, listen, um, I'm going to come on in, and I'm going to take Rome with my black shirts, who I just marched through your city, um, and if you don't like it, I'm taking you down, but if you make me prime minister, you can still be king, sir, um, and it works. And the king, without a fight, allows Mussolini to take over Italy. Um, he also is going to ally himself with the Catholic Church. Now, this is kind of a black guy in the Catholic Church. We're going to find out that World War II creates a lot of black eyes for the Catholic Church, that the Catholic Church turns a blind eye to a lot of things that were being done by people it supported, including Mussolini and, of course, later Hitler. Um, and, and Hitler and Mussolini, I'm sorry, is going to call himself El Duce, the Duke. Um, we talk about his secret police. He controls, he takes over all newspapers, all radio. There really isn't much television at this point, but there, there's some really light kind of um, silent television um, and, and film. And he uses this as a tool that he calls propaganda. 
okay? Um, this propaganda is going to be trying to convince the people of Italy to support him. He, he sends out messages like, Mussolini is always right. Really kind of weird, simple messages. And in America, Americans hear this, and the British hear this, and the French hear this, and they poo-poo him, right? They go, oh, that Mussolini. He's a nobody. He can't, no one believes him. Mussolini's always right. What a fool, right? No one, he's nothing. He's a nobody, right? He'll just disappear. Boy, were they wrong. Um, he also recruits young people, ages eight to 18, to be part of his youth fascist group. 66%, two out of every three young people join Mussolini's fascist movement. Um, we know we say Mussolini never had total control the way that Stalin did or, or Hitler, of course in part because he was so supportive of the church. Um, and let's take a look at some of these pictures. This, this, these are some really legendary kind of shots, right? Um, that's the Colosseum. Yeah, the Roman Colosseum. One of the promises that Mussolini made to the people of Italy that, that got support was, we're gonna bring back the Roman Empire. Um, Italy will be weak no more. Remember, the Italians were kind of embarrassed when they lost a war to the Ethiopians in, in the 1890s and the scramble for Africa. They didn't have as many colonies. They felt taken advantage of. And he, he pulls on, on the old Roman Empire strings to get support. Um, here is a statue of Mussolini riding horseback. Um, interesting. And here is Mussolini. With crowds of people. And he does this thing, back up, where he puts his hand straight up to the crowd. It's an old story that when Hitler, because Hitler and Mussolini will become buddies, and when Hitler first visits Italy, he sees the way that Mussolini behaves. Now, Hitler used to wear a suit, okay? Um, he comes to Italy and he gets off the plane and he's wearing his suit. And there's Mussolini wearing his military outfit. That's a sign that you have yourself a dictator, is if he dresses in military outfits. And he does this thing where he, every time that someone shouts at him, he has these big rallies, right, where tons of Italians show up and he gives these rousing speeches. You know, very, he yells and he walks around and he pounds, looks up and he'll, he'll, he'll make, make a big speech. I always show the videos in class. Um, unfortunately, of course, we can't see all the videos, but he'll, he'll make his, his point and then he'll kind of like stop and pound, pose. Right, and then he gets back into his spiel. And, and Hitler sees this, and it is a funny story that when Hitler gets off the plane in Germany, after visiting Hitler and Mussolini the first time, this is when Hitler had taken control, and we'll get into Germany. Um, he's wearing a military outfit, and that's when he started his Heil Hitler, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's when he started his mass rallies, was when, um, well, after he had visited with, with Mussolini. So a lot of people say that Mussolini was kind of the architect for, um, for, for Hitler, how Hitler would, would turn out to behave as leader after he takes over. Um, but yeah, now we have this, this new Italian, right, Mussolini, um, posing, um, exercising complete control over, over Italy or, or, or most complete control with the secret police and of course controlling the media and, and using propaganda to um, to try and get people to agree with him, pulling on the old Roman Empire. 